Quasar's tooltip component is really well thought out. You just whack it inside the component you need a tooltip for as a direct child, and everything just works from there. I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's start by going Q dash button, give it a label saying click me. And then if we put a direct child within there, that is a Q dash tooltip, we can put a tooltip that says, how about, but not too hard. <laughs> All right, now if I hover over this, it says, but not too hard. That's all I had to do to create a tooltip. You literally just make it a direct child of the thing that you want it to be a tooltip of. So this could, for example, be a Q dash card. And then instead of putting a label there, how about we put inside of it some lorem ipsum, save that. And now we've got a card and when we put our mouse over it, we get that tooltip. So not the prettiest example, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna control Z until I'm back to a button. And let's see what else we can do. We can also model this. So if we say V dash model is equal to show tooltip, and let's just yank ref out of here and then come down and we'll say const ref is equal to, oh, not ref, const show tooltip is equal to a reference to, and we'll make that false by default. And then I can return an object here and expose that in the template. And now, I can create a button that basically toggles show tooltip on or off. Check it out. Q dash button will say when this is clicked, show tooltip will be equal to true. And then let's copy paste that down. And this one is going to set it equal to false. Now I can put a label here saying show tooltip and then a label on this button saying hide tooltip. Save it, does a bit of formatting for me. That's built into my editor. And now if I click on show tooltip, it's going to show it for me. Same with hide tooltip will hide it for me. How cool is that? So if you need that extra bit of control, you can get it by simply modeling something like show tooltip in this example. All right, let's take a look at what else we can do. If we want to change the color, we could say class is equal to background dash gray dash two. And now if I hover that, it's got a gray background and we can't even see the text there. So how about we make the background green and then we say the text is going to be white. And there we go. In fact, a good example of this would be blue because usually blue kind of, uh, it kind of means information in the UI. So I like the idea of having a blue tooltip. And you might want to lighten it a little bit and maybe make the text gray dash nine. This is a pattern I use a lot where I'll have a very dark gray text, and then the background can be a lighter sort of, a lighter color, in this example, blue. And there we go, it looks kind of nice. So you can make that purple and that's still going to look pretty nice. All right, what else can we do? Well, if you wanna change the style, you can't actually do that directly here. So if I say, for example, font dash size is, how about 42 pixels? So we'll make it a very large font size. And that's not actually working, but if you want to add some styles, wrap whatever you've got inside there in a div, and then simply put those styles in that div, like so. We'll cut this, and then just paste it directly onto that div. And there we go, now it works. <laughs> that is a big tool tip. We can also change the offset. So if I come up here and say offset, we can say the X and Y offset. So let's say 100 by 100. And there we go, it's just gonna move that way down. We can also set a delay on this. So we say delay is equal to 4,000 seconds, 4,000 milliseconds, then that means one, two, three, four. It's gonna take four seconds in order for that to show. All right, let's get rid of those and see what else we can do. We can change the transition. So let's say transition hide and we'll make that flip dash right and then transition show we can say flip dash left and you can check out the docs and just search for transition to find the transitions that you have available to you or it might even be under animation so you can go ahead and look for that so let's take a look at that pretty fancy schmancy and then you can say something like transition duration which is basically saying how long Will this transition take to show and let's make that a really large number so it's painful <laughs> ready
Ah, oh, that is painfully slow. <laughs> All right, what else can we do? Now, the next thing I want to go through used to confuse me quite a bit. And so I'm going to try and explain it as best I can. But just understand that there's a section in the docs related to positioning, which is what we're about to talk about, positioning. And so if this confuses you, go ahead and check the docs. They've got a really cool example thing you can play around with. I'll show you it quickly. So play around with this if you want to understand positioning, but I'm going to quickly try and explain it to you to the best of my ability. All right, so we'll get rid of this so that the example is easier to do. We have self and we have anchor. Anchor means the thing that we are positioning from. So in this case, it's the button. So when I say anchor, I want you to think the button. Anchor, the button. If that were a cue card, then anchor would mean the card. All right, so anchor, the button. <laughs> so let's set anchor equal to center right. What we're basically saying is vertically on the button, I want you to think of this as center, okay? So the very center of the button. And then horizontally, it's on the right. So center right, meaning this point of the button. That's what we are referencing to, this point here. Now, when we talk about self, we're talking about the tooltip itself. Anchor is the button, self is the tooltip. And for the self, I'm going to put center left. So basically I'm saying for the tooltip, I want the center left of the tooltip to connect to the center right of the anchor. So let's have a look at that. And just to sort of drive this example home, I'll set the offset equal to zero, zero. It just helps to show this example a little bit more accurately. And there we go. Whilst you're looking at it now, I'll explain it one more time. For the anchor, in other words, the button, the center right is the origin. And for the tooltip, the center left is where it's connecting to. Center right of the bottom, center left of the tooltip. Let's play around with a couple more examples here. So we can say vertically, the top of the anchor, all right? So now we're at the top right of the button, which is going to be right here. And now for the tooltip itself, I wanna use the bottom, vertically the bottom, and then the left side, okay? So we'll leave that as is. Let's have a look at that. So there you go, top right of the anchor, top right of the button, bottom left of the tooltip. Okay, the reason I'm sort of going over this thoroughly is because this concept comes back in other components and it's important to understand. All right, so let's just drive this home with my, one more example. Vertically, the bottom of the anchor, and then horizontally on the left side, all right? So the bottom left is this part here of the button. Now, in terms of self, the tooltip, let's say the middle vertically. Oh, sorry, that should be center. Oh gosh, this stuff confuses me. <laughs> and then horizontally, the middle. And that's confusing because you use the word center for vertical and middle for horizontal. So let's go and check that out. And there we go, that was actually a bad example because it's hard to show. I might even remove the styling here just to make it a bit more obvious. And there we go, the center middle of the tooltip is at the bottom left of the button. Okay, so hopefully I explained that well enough for you to understand. So that's about it for the Q tooltip component. But just remember, you can always throw whatever you want in here. If you wanted, that could even be a Q card with a Q card section. And then you could have a lot of information in here. Maybe you wanna have a super thorough tooltip with a little bit of a different design. And there we go. Kind of weird in this example. Maybe you'd say, for example, style is equal to max width, 350 pixels, save it. And there we go. And then you do a little bit a little bit of other stuff with the styling, like background dash white, since the tooltip gets some styling by default, and then text dash gray dash nine, something like that. All right, so that's a pretty cool tooltip. And then I'll get rid of this just to show that this example can actually look good. There we go. I just wanted to show you, you have that extra flexibility with the tooltip if you need it. I mean, hey, you could even throw like a Q dash avatar in here and then you could set the color equal to something like blue and then maybe you could put like an icon in here q dash icon 
And I think there's one for information. Or oh, you know what? Let's just do the letter I. Save it. Or we'll do a lowercase I. That'll look better. And there we go. And then maybe you could like set the text of this equal to white. I'm getting a little bit carried away here. <laughs> you get the idea though. You can sort of play around with this and make it look however you like it. Really, really cool. So that's the Q tooltip component. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. Man, this was a lot of fun.